Human cloning has caught the public imagination for generations. The idea of being able to take one human being and duplicate them is, well, on one hand it sounds like science fiction, and yet it happens 4,000 times every day in nature. And how's that? Well, when a human egg is fertilized by a human sperm, those two cells fuse, they become one flesh. And out of that comes a ball of cells which eventually grows into an embryo which implants inside the mother's womb and eventually we have another human being being born. Now, in nature we see twinning as quite a common event. It's when this particular ball of cells splits into two and you land up with two identical people, identical clones of each other, being born in a totally healthy way. Now, you can replicate artificial twinning and Dr. Jerry Hall did this back in 1993 in Washington and he showed that it was relatively easy to take a physical ball of cells and to separate them, to manipulate them in some way, to encourage them to fall into two pieces or even more pieces, and that each piece would then tend to grow on into what looked like a viable human being, although he then destroyed his embryos at a very early stage. Now, although some said, oh, this is fanciful nonsense and he would probably damage the embryos in the process, the fact of the matter is, as I say, that nature does the same task 4,000 times every single day without any untoward consequences. Now, the other way that we see twinning in nature is when we have two eggs being released at the same time, which is, again, a natural event. It happens often. Fertilized by two different sperm. And then we get non-identical twins growing up in the womb. And through fertilization technology, when we're trying to encourage a woman who is having difficulty in conceiving uh, by giving her drugs to stimulate her ovaries, in that kind of situation, these kinds of multiple non-identical twins are really quite common. And indeed, it's quite a controversial side effect of the process. But, you know, the real controversy about human cloning has not been over these kinds of technologies. It's been over the thought that we could use the same technology that was used to clone Dolly the sheep in the late 1990s to clone an identical human being using an adult who's already alive. How does that work? Well, it's actually relatively simple. In theory, in practice, the failure rate is catastrophic. So here's the theory. You know that in every one of the cells of your own body is a complete set of your genetic code, the code of life which makes you you. I say almost every one of your cells. It's not the same in sperm or in eggs, um, and it's not the same in red cells which don't have a nucleus. But in every cell, like a skin cell or a brain cell, a liver scale, a cell or a bone cell, then you will find that this is true, that inside that bag there is a nucleus. Inside the nucleus is all the genes that we need to make another one of you. Now, most of those genes are turned off in most tissues so that in the skin, only skin cell genes are being activated. In the heart, only heart cell genes are activated. And indeed, we thought this process was fixed more or less uh, at a very early stage while uh, uh, you, you were developing in the womb. And these cells then become determined. We say they can't do anything else. They are fixed in their own identity. Now, we know that that isn't quite as simple as we thought, but that's how we used to understand it. What the cloners of Dolly the Sheep discovered was this. If you take a cell from an adult, in this case it was a frozen cell from an adult sheep, which is an interesting possibility, which we'll come back to, but if you take a, 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 a cell from an adult, you remove the nucleus from it, you throw the adult cell away, and you get hold of an unfertilized egg, you remove the nucleus from the egg, which only contains half the genes necessary for life, and you throw that away. You then put the new nucleus from the adult cell inside the egg and an amazing thing happens uh, which is that that egg starts to act as if it's fertilized. How do we do it? Well the technology isn't so difficult and such experiments have been done in frogs for many many years and they've been done successfully in a wide variety of mammals and some have claimed very successfully too in human embryos and one or two organizations have claimed that they've actually managed to produce a healthy cloned child but there's been no proof of that that is as of the time of making this video in June 2007 so how do you actually do it well if you take a 
a, a mammal egg. It's, it's huge in relation to a normal, say, mammal skin cell. It's full of all the nutrients that's needed in order to produce that first ball of cells. It's, a bit, it's got a whole lot of yolk and cytoplasm, if you like, a bit like a, a hen's egg. And it's quite easy to work with this big cell. You take out the nucleus and throw it away. What you then do is you put an adult cell, which is actually usually much smaller, against that unfertilized egg and the two attaching. You then put two tiny electrodes, one either side, one touching the egg, one touching the adult cell, and fire the tiniest current, electrical current, across it. As that happens, these two eggs, well, the egg and the adult cell, suddenly fuse. If you imagine two bubbles on, in the bath and they suddenly become one. And what happens then is that the nucleus from the adult cell, the skin cell or whatever cell you took it from, finds itself inside the chemical bath of the egg. And the chemical structure of that egg has all kinds of messages in that which are firing up the genes of this adult cell, turning on all those genes that were turned off for perhaps one or two decades. And that adult cell then will start to divide, uh, or rather its genes will start to divide, using the nutrients of the egg, and it starts to behave as if it's been fertilized, and you get another person. Now in practice, doing this procedure is very inefficient, and can result in unexpected side effects. For example, many of the cows that were cloned in the early stages of these experiments uh, turned out to have quite severe problems. Many were malformed before they were born or died shortly afterwards. And we suspect that the risks to human embryos or human beings of being cloned in this way are pretty catastrophic. The failure rate is certainly vast. It needs huge numbers of cells and a large number of experiments. But there are people who will be committed enough to have a jolly good go at it and they have had many attempts already. Now, most of the scientists who are involved in human cloning technology would point out that they are not interested in the slightest in making an identical copy of you, even though there are strange people around who would like that kind of thing done. One woman wrote to me and she said, I would like to have my dad as a baby. I would like to see that he goes on in the world. Another couple wrote to me about the son uh, who had been tragically uh, uh, brain damaged at birth. And now he had died, they hoped that tissue from his body could be used to clone him again so they could have their baby again and see what Mark would have been like had he not been brain damaged. Now, you can only begin to imagine what the psychological implications could be for children in such a situation. Um, let alone the uh, physical risks to the well-being of a child through this cloning technology. But as I say, scientists don't really want to use it for that reason. The vast majority of scientists want to use human cloning technology for medical research purposes. And they have argued, especially in the UK and other, some other countries, that medical technology, medical progress, will be aided enormously if they are given permission to do this kind of work.